These are the 20 books that I want to read in December. So I'm going to go through my December TBR in this video. There's a lot of Christmas books and I've already created a Christmas video with Christmas books by black authors and then a video with 16 different Christmas books that you guys should read. So I'm not going to like go through those Christmas books in depth, but I'm still going to share them here. And I am so bad at keeping up with my TBR. So don't hold me to this. Okay. Like I am such a mood reader, so I could very easily easily change my mind and that is okay because reading is supposed to be just for fun. So yeah, let's get into this video and make sure you guys are subscribed because in December there's going to be videos every single day for the entire month and there's normally videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So let's get into this huge stack of my December TBR and the books that I want to read. I'm going to share the titles of the Christmas books I want to read first because there are so many of them. I honestly ordered like I don't want to say too many because I don't know if you can have too many Christmas books, but I ordered a lot of Christmas books this year. And I don't know if I'm actually going to get to all of them, but I do have a ton on my TBR for this month. So let's go through these really fast. Again, I said I already like talked through each of these in depth whenever I did my Christmas videos. If you guys want to see that, I will link that below. But the first Christmas book I want to read is Set the Record Straight by Hannah Bodum Young. I've never read anything by this author and she wrote Out on a Limb. She's also written Next of Kin and so many people have rated those books super highly rated. So I think that this being my first book by her will be really nice because it's pretty short. Um, it's also a queer read and this is a hundred and I think 50, 162 pages. So it's like a very, very short book, which is really nice. I also have a book by Tessa Bailey on my list called Wreck the Halls. Now this is actually a new release and I read Window Shopping by this author last year and it was one of my favorite Christmas reads. So I feel like I'll really like reading her books for Christmas. I've read... Um, one of her books and, or one of her books outside of like a Christmas book. And it wasn't like my favorite, it was like okay. But I really love the Christmas book. So I feel like I'll really like this one. I also plan on reading The Christmas Wager uh, by Holly Cassidy and Faking Christmas by Carrie Winfred or Winfrey. These are both new releases. They just came out like a month ago. Um, I add these in, I don't even know who these authors are, but I just picked them up because I've been in a Christmas mood and really wanting to read like Hallmarky type Christmas books. So I really hope I like these. I also picked up two books by the same author. I picked up Only for the Holidays and I picked up Love in Winter Wonderland by Obiola Bello. And these books are like books that have been highly recommended by you guys. This book actually came out last year and this one just came out this year. I think it only has like 30 reviews on Goodreads. So very excited to read these. And then I also picked up The Christmas Fix by Lucy Score. Hi, bud. They wanted to come say hi. I picked up the Christmas Fix by Lucy Score, and this book actually came out um, like a couple years ago, I think, but they just like released the cover, like a new cover. So I'm excited to read this one because I feel like her books are super easy and like fluffy. And I also picked up The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Lise, and you guys have recommended this book to me, and it's about a woman who's actually like in her 40s or 50s, like finding love. And I love reading diverse reads in like ages and stuff. Um, so I think this will be fun, and it's a little short novella. Now let's get into the books that are not Christmas related. There are tons of them. The first book that I want to read is where there's smoke there's fire by monique fisher this is actually a book that i recently um shared in a haul make sure you guys are watching all the hauls because that's where you're gonna get like a lot of the new book recommendations but this book looks so good it says when aaron Tompkins and Kara Matthews first meet sparks fly but Kara isn't looking for love having just ended things with her boyfriend Aaron isn't willing to give up and their occasional casual hookup quickly evolves after a grave mistake that almost ends their relationship he decides to fight for Kara there's no way he's walking away now Aaron may not be the type of man Kara saw herself falling in love with a tattooed strong silent type who's rough around the edges but he proves himself to be the type of man she needs Needs. This looks so good. Their steadfast commitment to each other gets them through life's rough patches and takes them on a journey they never expected. Where There's Smoke, There's Fire is a black contemporary take on the epic love story. Aaron and Kara's journey is what happens after the happily ever after. Freaking cute. Also, the words look really easy to read. I just cannot wait for this one. I feel like I'm gonna really get into thrillers during cozy season. And so I have Next of Kin by Kia Abdullah on my... TBR and I actually heard about this book um, from a book 
uh, talker. I like love following people on BookTok because I always find the most unique recs and I can't remember what her name is. I know it starts with the A but I can't remember like off the top of my head but if you guys go to my TikTok she's like one of the people that I follow on there. I think she's like a recent follow um, but this says that there's it's an ordinary working day and Layla receives a call from her brother-in-law and his voice is filled with panic and it says that his, it says on the back that his son's daycare is called to ask where little Max is and it says Layla was supposed to drop Max off that morning but she forgot. Racing to the parking lot she grasps the horror of what she's done. And then what follows is an explosive high profile trial that tears the family apart and you pretty much have to figure out like who did what like it just looks like a really good uh thriller and i haven't read a courtroom thriller but i've heard great things about this one the next book that i have on my tbr is the last sad love song by kimberly brown i can't remember if i put this on my tbr or not but i really want to read it so I'm excited to um, have it in my December TBR. This is supposed to be a drama free love story and I love those. I feel like those are just a nice little palette cleanser and I just feel like it'll be a fun read. It's also super short. I have a lot of short books in my TBR for this month just because I feel like whenever it is a busy, busy season, like during the holidays or just like whenever life is busy, it's kind of daunting to read like super thick long books, but I feel like I breeze through short ones so fast and this is only 135 pages so I'm excited for that. I just realized I was a little backlit so I turned off the light behind me and I feel like it's a little bit better just to show you guys the rest of these books and I'm just oh I'm so excited for these. I feel like this is a great way to end off the year. I did forget one Christmas book and it is Snow King Catches His Snowflake by A.E. Valdez. Um, I shared all the other Christmas books obviously already but this is one I definitely want to add in. I'm trying to finish off all of my Christmas uh romances by black authors this year. I think there will be some Christmas books that will run over until the new year but I want to finish like all the Christmas Christmas books and there's some that are like holiday books but they don't have like Christmas in the title but they're like snowy and wintry and I feel like I'll want to still read those in January but I want to make sure that I finish all the black romances because I feel like I don't know there's just are I don't have a ton of like Christmas books in my TBR so I feel like I can finish them and another book that I have on my list to read is Mistakes Were Made by Meryl Wilsner. This is a queer read and it is is a book that I've heard a lot of great things about. It is about a uh, woman who goes to her daughter's family weekend, like at college, like it's just a pretty typical thing to do. And she ends up bumping into this girl at the bar and the bar is just like a college bar, but the lady who's there, she ends up like hitting it off. I think they like hook up. She like goes back to her house or something. The next day, Literally the next day, her daughter's like, hey, I'm gonna bring over one of my friends. And the mom's like, sure, yeah, of course. Like, I'd love to meet your friends. Finds out that it's the girl that she went home with. This looks messy. This looks like it's giving mess and I just, I eat that stuff up. The next book on my TBR is Block Shot by Kennedy Ryan. Long Shot by Kennedy Ryan was so good. I literally ate it up and I like need to continue this series and especially because I've heard great things about her um, book that just well actually wasn't just released but a lot of you guys got the arc um, on NetGalley and like your Kindle and stuff. I've heard great things about her recent release or her not recently released the book that's coming out at the beginning of next year. So I just want to read all of her books for the new book comes out next year. I don't know why I just love her writing. It's so easy to read and I feel like it always just pulls in my heartstrings. Um, so this one is a basketball romance, which I think all the books in the series are. I'm not really sure exactly what this one is about, but I kind of want to go into this one blind. I don't know why, but I feel like it's just because I know I love Kennedy Ryan's writing. So I feel like going into this one blind will be fine. I'll still really enjoy it. The next book on my TBR is What Lies Between Us by John Mars. I've never read anything from John Mars before but I actually want to jump into more like thriller authors this year that I've never tried or just like at the end of this year beginning of next year. I read a lot of Frida McFadden and you guys know I love a good popcorn thriller but I found some people who shared like good thrillers and I've just been nervous to jump into them because I'm like what if they're slow what if they're boring like thrillers to me 
like the meat and the like love for the book comes from the plot line like it doesn't come from the characters and so if you have a slow plot line like I am just so bored but I've never DNF'd a book so I like want to finish the book you know what I mean so this one it looks really good it says Nina can never forgive Maggie for what she did and she can never let her leave they say every house has its secrets and the house that Maggie and Nina have shared for so long is no different Except that these secrets are not buried in the past. Every other night, Maggie and Nina have dinner together. When they're finished, Nina helps Maggie back to her room in the attic and into the heavy chain that keeps her there because Maggie has done things to Nina that can't ever be forgiven and now she's paying the price. But there are many things about the past that Nina doesn't know and Maggie is going to keep it that way even if it kills her. Because in this house, the truth is more dangerous than lies. Like this already sounds wild. And the fact that they're already telling you that this like woman's literally locked up and like chained in the attic and she's just like, okay, like fine, like whatever. Like is she kidnapped? Like do they have like a deal going on? I don't know, but I'm like very intrigued. I picked up Unconditional by Sean and this is a book that I thought was the second book in a series, but it's actually not. Like it's just a standalone like by itself. Um, but I read the book called, I think it's like Unforgettable. I think that's what it was called. Love that book, rated four stars, it was so good. And so I really wanted to read another book by this author and this says, their worlds crashed once, it's about to happen again. Charlotte Kennedy has it all, a comfortable life, a wide social circle, a trust fund to fall back on. All she needs is a chance to prove that she deserves it. Damien St. Lefleur has built something out of nothing. His immigrant parents are already proud of his Wall Street success, but something draws him back home to Palm Beach, right where it all started, and right into Charlie's path. The two of them are suddenly forced to work together, let go of their past hangups, and work through their complicated expectations, but who's to say they won't get it right this time around? I, I love stories like that. I just, I'm gonna eat this up. And it's also really short. This one is only 187 pages. This is gonna be a good one. I, I just know it. The next book on my TBR is one I'm really excited about and it's called Juliet Takes a Breath. I think I'm most excited about this because I've been really getting into like lots of graphic novels and this one is like a little superhero graphic novel and it looks really fun. It's actually a adaptation of a best-selling book and I've done a another little read of a book that turned into a graphic novel. I think it was called Long Way Down and I really loved it. So I feel like I'll really love this one as well. And this one's called um, Juliet Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera and Celia Muscade. Or Muscat, Muscat, Muscat. I don't know. Anyway, you get you get the chance. See, next book on my TBR for December is Everyone Here Is Lying, and this book actually looks so incredible because I just I love Sheree Lapina's writing, but it looks incredible because the title alone is like already making me suspicious of like what's gonna happen. I think I want to go into this kind of blind. I don't really know like much about it. It says, "Welcome to Stanhope, a safe neighborhood, a place for families. Nothing will prepare you for the truth." But I've read like three Sheree Lapina thrillers and loved them, ate them up. She gives popcorn thriller vibes, like not always, but for the most part, they're pretty fast, like a couple next door. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones that I read. I can't think the top off, off the top of my head, but I really like this one. Um, or I really like the couple next door, so I feel like I really like this one. And this one also just came out this year. Guarding Temptation is a book by Talia Hibbert, and it says two former friends, one cramped apartment, three little rules. And it says the rules are, uh, she must move into his flat, she must sleep in his bed, and she cannot leave his side, not for a second. Oh, this looks so good. It says, Nina Chapman's most embarrassing moment, finally dragging James Foster into bed. The stern, steady mechanic made her see stars, then called her mistake and disappeared. Excuse me, sis. <laughs> Leaving the tatters of their friendship in his wake. But when Nina's work as an investigative journalist brings her death threats to her door, James marches back into her life, armed with irrational demands, and he doesn't care how long it's been or how distant they've become. She must move in his flat, she must sleep in his bed, and she cannot leave his side, not for a second. What could possibly go wrong? I've never read anything from Talia Hibbert, but this one looks like a good one. It's also really short. It is only 113 pages, so I feel like it'll be fun. Rosewater by Live Little is a book that I picked up in Chicago when I did my little like Chicago um, tour of like the bookstores when I went to like six different bookstores. It's a queer read and it looks really good. I don't know what is like, what this book is really about, but I know it's a debut novel. Um, it says it's about intergenerational love, healing, and one woman's journey home. 
I, again, don't know what this is about, but I kind of want to go into a blind because the debut book and I kind of looked over it in the bookstore and I feel like it's my vibe, but again, I don't really even know what this is about, but I do like to go into some books blind. Not all of them, but definitely some of them. And that is all the books I plan on reading in December. I can guarantee that this TBR will change. Like literally, I can bet my life on it because I feel like I am just such a huge mood reader that I never stick to the same thing. And last month I literally read so many books, but like hardly any of the books were on my TBR. And I just feel like that's what makes reading fun. It's like you can change your mind, you can read based on your mood, and I don't know, I do that so much. I usually read between 60 to 20 books a month which is why I make a book uh, TBR that has 20 books on it but maybe I'll start making a smaller TBR I don't know it would kind of make sense to make a smaller TBR so I can like stick to what I'm actually planning maybe like eight books or something and then I have like room to move around but I don't know it's also fun to just show you guys like the books that are like front of mind for me and that I'm really excited about so let me know what you guys think like I feel like I'm never gonna stick to a TBR like exactly but maybe if I made a smaller one it would be easier for me to stick to but then again it's kind of fun like it's like Russian roulette for books like am I gonna read any of these I don't know will I you never know but let's uh let's have fun with it so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one bye guys <laughs>